First, we need to know the difference between series and parallel. In series, the positive post would go to the first uh, positive terminal of the first speaker, and then that would go through to the second speaker, and then that gets returned to the negative post on the back of the uh, speaker cabinet. So you can see everything happens in series. In parallel, the positive post goes to the positive um, pin of the first speaker and the second speaker, and the negative also gets done in parallel. This is what it looks like on a four cab. Again, the positive post goes to the first speaker and then gets daisy chained through all of that done in series. And this is what it looks like in parallel, where the positive post is connected to all four at the same time and the negative is um, uh, connected to all four as well. So here's how we uh, we work out the, um, the ohms of these various uh, cabinets. So we have our series in parallel, both having uh, two eight ohm speakers. Now to, to calculate the impedance of something in series, it would be the total impedance of the two times eight ohm speakers in series is eight ohms plus eight ohms, it's 16 ohms. Where in parallel, the total impedance of two eight ohm speakers in parallel, it is eight ohms divided by the number of speakers, so it's four ohms. So a lot of difference, 16 ohms versus four ohms, of four ohms, depending on whether it's in series or parallel. Let's do the same thing with a four by cabinet. The total in uh, impedance of four eight ohm speakers, you just add them all up. That's 32 ohms, where in parallel, it is that eight ohms divided by the number of speakers, which is four, ends up being two ohms. So we've gone down the line from pick to speaker, but if you're gonna run this through a PA system or record the output of your rig, you're gonna to need to mic up your cabinet. And wouldn't you know it, much in the same line as our historic Telecaster here, the go-to microphone that you, people use has been around since 65. The Shure Studio Mic or SM57, that's what it stands for, Studio Mic. I'd like a buck for every famous recording made with this bulletproof mic. So many recordings made of this, just throw one of these in front of a cabinet, point a dead center or just, just off dead center, uh, the cone just a few inches back and you're good to go. Sennheiser 421s work really well too. Now, if you wanna add some warmth uh, or more body to your recordings then using an R121 by Roy Labs, is your uh, ribbon microphone. It's a little pricey, but it's really the gold standard. Love this mic to bring up some warmth. So here's a side and front view of a speaker. If we were to take out our SM57, this is the place that I would place that mic just off of the dust cover where the dust cover meets the uh, meets the cone. You could place it right in the middle, but that's the brightest part of the speaker and that might be just a little bit too bright. My go-to place is right there where that dust cap uh, hits, the, hits the cone. Now another perennial favorite uh, dynamic mic is the, uh, the Sennheiser 421 and I would place that basically in the same place. If you want a little bit more warm, then you would move out a little bit further, but that is a typically a good place for it to be. And then if we were to add a ribbon mic, you know, the R121 uh, by Royer, I would place that right down the middle. That can afford to be right in the brightest part because that doesn't seem to be as harsh when you get right in the middle of the speaker as some of the, the other mics. Now one thing to consider if I just direct your attention to the left hand side of the screen is the phase coherence. In other words, the part of the mic, the capsule that's actually doing the business end, not the end of the mic, but the, the, the part inside that mic um, uh, chassis that is the business part of the microphone, they should all be lined up so you don't get any phase issues. A great way to be able to see exactly where that dust cap is, is turn the lights off and shine a flashlight uh, through that grill. You can see there is a dust cap right there and this corner here would be perfect to place our SM57. So with a couple of tape marks there, you can see exactly where to place your mic. I'll place uh, the Royer right in the middle of the dust cap and then the 421 just off to the right. So this is what it looks like when we mic up all of those three different microphones together. And if we were to take a top view, you can see they're all lined up so that we won't have any phase issues at all. Let's have a listen to all of them mixed together.